This is Annie and Lauren, and this is our dream classroom. These are our goals of early education. What should be achieved in early childhood education? Create a caring community of learners. Recognize each child's unique strengths and support the full inclusion of all children. Given differences in culture, family structure, language, racial identity, gender, abilities and disabilities, religious beliefs, or economic class. Help children get to know, recognize, and support one another as valued members of the community. Establish healthy relationships. Uphold every family's right to make decisions for and their children. If a family's desire appears to conflict with your professional knowledge or presence an ethical dilemma, work with the family to learn more, identify common goals, and strive to establish mutual acceptable strategies. Assess children's learning and development. Focus on strengths. Develop in the skill to observe a child's environment from the child's perspective. Seek to change what you can about your own behaviors to support that child instead of expecting the child to change first. Recognize that it is often easier to focus on what a child isn't going, what isn't doing compared with peers than it is to see what the child can do in a given context. The purpose of school. We go to school to not only gain knowledge, but expand our social skills and grow as individuals. Beliefs on how children learn and play. So we believe our students learn best through play. Play allows for student expression of personality and uniqueness. Knowing a child is also very important to a proper education, building trust and bonds within the student. Students learn best in a non-distracting environment, meaning minimal bright decorations within their immediate surroundings, and the importance of student interest when planning curriculum. The theory we use for our classroom is Vygotsky. Vygotsky states the importance of culture and social context for learning. Cognitive development stems from social interactions from guided learning within the zone of proximal development as, as children and their parents co-construct knowledge. This is an important concept that relates to the difference between what a child can achieve independently and what a child can achieve with guidance and encouragement from a skilled partner. The zone, of, the zone of proximal development as the area where the most sensitive instruction or guidance should be given, allowing the child to develop skills that will then use on their own, developing higher mental functions. Our classroom design. So for our classroom, we've laid out a method that would work best for our dream classroom. So starting, with number one, which is the teacher's desk, which is kind of insignificant. And number two is the smart board, which is used for instruction as well as interactive materials. Students can come up and write on it and practice writing or fill in the blanks. They can also play games and it brings student engagement. Number three is student desks and groups, which is very beneficial for small group work. Students are able to bounce ideas and knowledge off one another and not always rely on the teacher for help. Number four is activity center, which is a space for students to play and collaborate with one another. There's a large round table for group activities, a beanbag chair for sitting and reading, organization for toys and books as well. Number five is the circle rug. The rug will be used for large group activities such as class readings or discussions. Examples of going over a class calendar, discussing the week at glance, reading as a group, etc. And number six is our class bulletin board. This area includes our class calendar, our weekly slash daily schedule, I can statements and a space to show off students' work. In our classroom, we will use the emergent curriculum. A classroom's curriculum stems from the particular interests of children. Curriculum topics are derived from talking with children and their families, as well as from things that are known to be interesting to children, such as princesses, cars, flowers, and robots. Student-led teaching is based on the idea that we are naturally curious about the world around us. By allowing kids to explore, you encourage them to be lifelong learners and to take responsibility for their education. Instead of satisfying requirements and ticking off boxes, students will be given a central role in deciding how they will spend their time. 
It may make them more aware of their personal interests, strengths, and weaknesses. It can also teach them about how they learn best. The teacher's role. Teachers play a dual role in the Reggio Emilio classroom. Their primary, primary role is to learn alongside children, becoming involved in group learning experiences as a guide and resource. A Reggio Emilio teacher must always carefully observe and track the growth of children in the classroom community. Reggio Emilia teachers will also take time to reflect on what they have learned about themselves in their teaching. So our teaching strategy we chose to focus on was play-based learning. So what is play-based learning? Play-based learning is a type of early childhood education based on child-led and open-ended play. It's important because it helps children to develop social skills it increases their motivation to learn, as well as increasing language and numeracy skills, and it has a huge impact on social emotional development in the early childhood years. Assessment. So what is assessment? It's the process of gathering information about a child, reviewing the information, and then using that information to plan a future educational activity that are at the level that a child can understand. Assessment's important because it provides educators, parents, and families with critical information about a child's development and growth. Non-task assessment options include teacher assessment through observation, show and tell, games, and project-based learning. These are all good examples of how a teacher can implement their assessment into their curriculum without giving kids a multiple choice test or something that would give the kids anxiety and usually little kids don't perform well on tests. Child guidance. In our classroom, we will employ strategies such as ex exposing children to a wide variety of educational opportunities that encourage self-expression, communication, logical thinking, and problem solving. Teachers guide children in evaluating their own work and participating in determining where improvement is needed. Some work is corrected in small groups in which teachers and children give feedback and their children edit their own or each other's work. Students will be able to pick the topics that they would like to learn about and teachers will create lessons that incorporate the students' interests while including developmentally appropriate practices. Staff Connection. What is DAP? DAP stands for Developmentally Appropriate Practice, which is methods that promote each child's optimal development and learning through strengths-based, play-based approach to joyful, engaged learning. Examples of DAP in the class is individualized instruction for children if they fail to make expected progress on a subject or skill, intellectually engaging and challenging curriculum that expands knowledge of the world and vocabulary, and opportunities to work in small groups for focused instruction and collaboration with other students, which is a focus of our classroom setup. In conclusion, our goal is to create a safe and caring community within our classroom. We want to build trusting relationships with each student to help give each child the best education possible. Each child's background is very important to us in our classroom. We want everyone to feel accepted and loved. We wish to organize a classroom that is not only well thought out and executed, but also provide the proper and functional learning environment.